All right. Welcome to another episode of Bustin' with the Boys. I am your host, Will Compton. As you guys can hear, I have some vocal pasitis going on. I have some stuff going on with my throat. I have no clue what's happening. You guys know I was getting over that uh, that butt wind infection in my eye, known as pink eye. For whatever happens, some viral infection, I don't know what it is, but I've been paying the price with the old windpipes for like the last, how long has it been? Like 12 days now? We're going on like two weeks Thursday. But, you know, something similar to Morgan Wallen, I assume, but we're different here. It don't matter if we get recommended to take six weeks off, go on bed rest, don't speak unless it's for social media. We play fucking hurt here. We are built of fucking grit, determination. I know the voice doesn't sound like it, but you guys know the quote. You know the quote, JP. History is who we are now. And we're showing up for the fans. If you guys are watching right now on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Make sure to leave comments. Tuesdays are for the boys right now. Taylor's gone. Taylor, he was on vacation in Cabo. He's in Arizona taking care of some personal stuff. So it's just a boy. I couldn't get a guest. I was trying to get a guest. I know we need we need guests. This is a at times it's a guest driven show, but it's just me and the boys. I know you guys love when the boys chop it up. So if you're in the comments right now, if you're in the live chat, move over to comments. Talk about fucking how gritty we are. Talk about Tuesdays are for the boys. Say whatever you got to say to get this chat bumping because we need fucking everybody right now. Um, hopefully I'm hanging out in the comments with you. We, we should all probably wake up at six tomorrow and just join everybody for the comments. Fucking show our loyalty. Get in there. Also, what you guys can look forward to tonight, we're going to plug it. We're going to plug it. 8 p.m. Central Time. Push up Tuesday with JP on JP Hovey's Instagram Live. JP, what is your Instagram? My Instagram is at jhovey34. You're going to want to be there. We have some big guests lined up. Yes, sir. And of course, you get an opportunity to join the live, but you got to drop, give us 20, and ask a few questions. So if you're in the live, just for clarification, you join the live and you're chatting it up, you have the opportunity to join. If you get picked, you have to drop and give 20 with the boys. Correct. And, and last you get week, a couple minutes to, you know, right. hang out, get to know JP and Taylor a little bit. And last week, every single person that was on was jacked. So we Love need that. to have a repeat Love this that. year. He said jacked. Um, Sweet. But yes, it's, it, listen, the push up the IG live tonight, guys, join it. It is a very gritty fucking performance. A performance that reminds us of you guys know what? The Chevy Silverado. You know we're truck guys through and through. And the Chevy Silverado has been a partner with unstoppable grit and determination. It's been our most valuable truck or the MVT. And now we have the first ever all-electric Silverado that joins the franchise. We got a chance to see this thing and experience it. Boys, let me tell you, this thing is <laughs> What a truck that is. What a truck. I walked in the room and I said, what a truck. Make sure to bleep that out, Bloss. Can't cuss on this. Available 400 mile range GM estimated on a full charge. That means, let me say it again because I feel like I stumbled over my words. On a full charge, this thing gets 400 miles on the truck. Over 10 feet of length in the bed with a multi-flex tailgate that we've talked about in previous episodes through the test of time. Combined now with a multi-flex mid-gate, a large 17-inch diagonal display screen, it can tow up to 10,000 pounds of max towing. Zero to 60 in under 4.5 seconds with wow mode or willy mode. That means I run my 40 in 4.5 seconds. Up to an impressive 785 foot pounds of torque. And we figured out what torque means. Jack, tell us what torque means. Are you not listening? Jack, tell us what torque means, baby. Torque I know what it is. How is. fast you get off the line, basically. Love that. Love that. Your 10 speed. Your 10 yard dash. Exactly. Uh, head over to Chevy.com to learn more. Guys, the Chevy Silverado built with unstoppable grit, determination, no days off, no six weeks of bed rest when you have a Chevy Silverado. I know these vocal cords are down. There's some other artists and people out there in the world that are pushing concerts back because they're built like other brands that we can't speak of. But here at Chevy, a Chevy podcast, we don't take any days off. Leave a comment. Um, let's get started, man. Let's uh, let's get into some. Gary, you got something? Yeah, I got some breaking news. Oh shit! Actual breaking news? Yeah. Oh. Uh, kids built like a Chevy, so this works. Okay. But Dylan Riola has committed to the University of Georgia. So we're all fucked. <laughs> Dog, when you said Dylan Rayola, I was like, oh my God, we, we landed him. You're, I, has committed to, and I'm thinking of 
the University of Nebraska. I was, I, I, I was 99% sure we were going to get this kid. And for you to say that. What year is he? We still got time. Number one player in the 2024 class. Number one, we still got some time. Trust me. He's committed he to Ohio to State. He schools. committed. He only visited three schools after the Ohio State thing. USC, Nebraska, and Georgia. No, look, I think, I think we still got time. We got to get him to campus again. We got to get him to campus when, you know, maybe when I'm at campus. You know what I mean? When I'm on campus, we need to get him to the bus and bowl. Roll out the red carpet. But that fucking pisses me off, dude. I'm going to be honest. God damn it. I mean, one of his family members are, is the old line coach there. We're going to protect you. We're going to keep you upright. We're going to bring back, we were going to bring back tradition. It's still there. You are right. Like, you know, there's a lot of, I'm, I'm processing this in real time. So you got to work with me a little bit. Like, listen, I know we have time. I know I need to keep my chin up. There's still fucking time. But to pretend like I'm not bothered by this, you know what I mean? Like a 17, 18 year old kid in high school currently not going to the school, my alma mater. I mean, what is it? Alma mater. For me to pretend like this ain't going to move my sail a little bit as a grown-ass man. It feels personal. It does. It feels fucking personal. I've had conversations, not with him directly, but this old man. We got some good common folk. I'm in group chats. What do you feel like you could have done differently? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to talk about. That's you what I'm did. trying to You left about. it all out there. Because they're asking me about brand, you know, some brand stuff, potential podcasting. Like, I'm giving free game. You know what I mean? You feel used, kind of. I'm not used. Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Not used, but a part of me is like, you know, I'm thinking long term. I'm thinking what the play is here on the chessboard. And that sucks. That sucks. Because I think like, with that five, what was it? That five-star old lineman who was shouting, you know, shouting out greatness when he was on his Nebraska visit last week. You talk about the greats have walked these halls, halls, Will Compton. Yeah, which I'm a big believer in. Do that pose, man. Just don't hit the splits. Don't hit the splits. Um, but you got a five-star O-lineman there. Do, if, if Dylan would have committed to Nebraska, or if Dylan's a Cornhusker, kids are going to follow his lead. You got a five-star, the number one player in the country. You don't, you know what I mean? You're setting the trend. You're not waiting for other pieces to get put in place, like get a wide receiver, and then maybe I'll think about it. Like, you're going to bring the talent. Like, right now, you're going to a place, like, you're just going to be another guy. Yeah, like, I'm sure Stetson Bennett's going to go back and play a couple more years. Still don't have his degree, so. Yeah, he still don't have his degree, like. Finish business. There's so many greats that come out of Georgia, and don't get it twisted. There's some greats that come out of Nebraska now, but you're, you're, you're reestablishing a legacy in history. And you're just not going to do that at a place like Georgia. Like, yeah, you get to go in and be like, oh, I want a natty. Sweet. Who, who hasn't? <laughs> like, who hasn't won a natty at Georgia? Um, I don't know, man. That fucking blows. But, hey, we're not, you know, we got to keep the vibes up. It's a positive podcast. What a tough note to start on right now. Um, but, man, that fucking sucks. He, you know, we won't say bust because we still got time to land him. Yeah. yeah. We still got time to land him. You know what I mean? We got to. Yeah, we got to figure out a way that is true. We got, you know. Oh, that sucks, man. God damn it. Well, put out some fires on social media. All we got to do, Huskers, just stay focused, keep winning these polls online, and we're going to get it rolling going into the season. <laughs> you guys heard what happened at, uh, speaking of college football, you guys heard of what happened at Iowa? Sounds like they might have taken a page out of the Payoff Willie book. JP, go ahead and brief, debrief what, what's going on at Iowa right now. So somebody might have to correct me on the exact number, but like 41. 41 student athletes at Iowa and one employee are under investigation for gambling. And it's members of the baseball team, track and field, wrestling. Gotta be football. football. Um, yeah, baseball, football, men's basketball, men's track, men's wrestling, and one athletic department employee. And there's actually... 111 people involved in the investigation. 111? Across those. And there's also kids at Iowa State. So this isn't just Iowa. This is the whole I mean, Iowa, I, Iowa State. 
I would go as far to say is I'm sure there's some stuff going on at probably every university out there. Athletes need to be cautious. DraftKings, FanDuel, all these sports books are outing you guys. Yeah, yeah, they got they got some information. Not the Barstool Sportsbook. They don't do that. But FanDuel and DraftKings and all these other fluff programs out there, they are in bed with the big dogs. They're outing you guys. Be on your toes. Keep your head on a swivel. One, one thing I think that should come out in these reports is how much they're winning. Or are they losing? Yeah. Being part of the punishment. Just like like you're saying, like put all their put all their uh, right. personal shit out there. Exactly. I think they just need to open it up. You just can't gamble on your own team. Yeah. Yes. Just you can't gamble on your own team. Like open it up, man. Let them make accounts. Let them make profiles connected to their NIL, connected to their bank account. Let them gamble on things outside of their sport. Because like, you know, we're going to be moving towards and evolving with the gambling space. I mean, there's sports books and stadiums. There's like the NCAA. I don't know exactly what the NCAA, like I don't know if they're advertising, but all the like Fox Sports, ESPN, all these big media companies are in bed with these gambling sports books. Like it's just business now. It's like the way, it's like everyday business going on. And so I think they just need to open it up and let it happen. Like you, you're, you're normalizing it everywhere else except for like these athletes. Now, and I say that slowly, not to be taken out of context like Joel Embiid, I do not think athletes, I, I, athletes should not be gambling on their own sport. Obviously, like it gets a little messy there. But every other sport, like just let it be fucking clear. Like give them the profile, give them the login, like let them fucking gamble. Let them lose their fucking scholarship checks. Let them get in a pinch. You know what I mean? Like that's the, we want to treat, these kids want to be treated like pro athletes, right? They want the NIL. They want to get all the money now. Like treat them like fucking pros. They're amateurs, but they're making money. Like let them make mistakes. They want to gamble, let them gamble. And it would probably benefit them in the long run. Because you know how so many guys go broke, like when they get it to the NFL. You learn in college, there's way less risk. Right, right. And it's it's lower amounts, I would assume. What do you got, Mitch? You said double-sided coin. If they, like, to kind of go back on what you said, like, it could help them not get broke, but at the same time, they're not very good at betting. If they're not following payoff willy, then they're going to lose all their money. They could I get love, into a slippery I love how slope. you're pushing our show, like, with all this conversation. It's like a slip. It's a slip. I think, in my opinion, I think this is so dumb that they're getting in trouble for it. If they're not uh, betting on their sports and, like, like, twisting the outcome, then I think it's fine. In my opinion, I agree. I agree. It's like it's just, it's just I think hypocritical that we're making gambling such a normal part of everyday life in the sports world. Basically, like we, gambling is is in front of everybody. There's so much money being spent on it for the advertising and the marketing. It's like figure out the lines, which is don't gamble on your own sport and let people fucking do whatever they want to do. Like experience is the best teacher. Let these let these dumbass kids lose money. They'll learn. They'll figure it out. Speaking of dumb and experience being a teacher, John Morant, again, flashing a gun on Instagram Live. His homeboy trying to get some clout, putting John Morant on Instagram Live, showing like, yo, I'm hanging with him. But you saw, like, even he knew, like, oh, fuck. Hey, dumbass, put the fucking gun down. What is he doing, man? <clears throat> what is going on? Something, it feels like, I don't know, at this point, yeah, it's just like, it's so beyond... Like being normal, it's just the dumbest thing you can imagine. I, he's a, he's suspended right now. The dude's probably gonna lose clear most all of his endorsements at this point. Nike didn't even drop him over the last one, but they have to drop him over this one. Right? Have to. Uh, it blows my mind that you're making the same mistake. And this isn't even a. We're not even a couple months removed from the last one when you went to rehab or whatever it is for six days and he then they told to, you like it was a seminar yeah counseling and, and they told him they said he was good so that way he could make playoffs <clears throat> he could play in the playoffs but you're making these same dumbass mistakes like man you are fucking up your bag like you are fucking up your money and you're surrounding yourself with the wrong people like I, like I, I get guys want to hang out with all their friend groups and they don't want to forget where they came from and they want to you know, there's a part of success that you want your your circle to experience with you, right? You want to uplift them too. You feel like you are now in a position and you there's a part of you that also wants to help your friends. But 
you got to know that you're not going the same direction your friends are going. And I'm not saying your friends are going in bad directions. I'm just saying like all of us right now sitting on this bus, we all have different goals and ambitions in mind. Yes, we're all in the same circle right now working together and everything else, but we all have different ambitions and different trajectories in our life. That at some point is going to split us up. Doesn't mean we're not going to be friends anymore. We can't be homies. It doesn't mean, oh, he's changed up because he th he thinks he's leveled up. He's gotten money now and gotten this, had this sense of fame and everything else. And that's speaking to, um, you know, experience with my own self. I'm not saying I ever had friends that would try and get me to buy stuff. Like I've had friends who've asked like, hey, can you float me this amount of money? Can you buy this for me? Can you buy that for me? And if I win, I would say no. I'm sure in their mind, like why can't comp help me out or why can't Will help me out or do X, Y, and Z. And you just have to know that you, you're, you're, you, you have to take care of yourself first. And just because you've attained all this success doesn't mean everybody else can be in it. And I know I'm kind of getting on a tangent that's outside of him flashing the gun. I'm saying that you've got to get out of that influence. Like you are who you surround yourself with. You've got to start surrounding yourself with the right people. You have your parents work their ass off or people in your life. I don't know his, his, his family life. I don't know how he grew up, but there's a lot of people and mentors and teachers and, and people that I'm sure have tried doing everything possible to put him in a situation to where it's like, you're there, man, fucking go take it and run from it. Like, don't look back, not don't look back and not be friends with your boys anymore. If you want to help them out, you got to figure out ways to balance that life of doing what you need to do and what you were put on this earth to do and what your purpose is right now and figuring out how to balance your family and home life and friend life going on because you're in a different world now, man. And, and people that are screaming the whole, what's the problem? Like second amendment, like, has he done anything wrong? It doesn't matter. The NBA is a private institution. It's like, you know, you, you got to make the right choices. If it's like, you're, you're allowed to smoke weed as long as you don't go up, go past this certain threshold and test positive. Right. And weed is legal in some States, but those States like guys are going to be on camera fucking promoting weed and smoking weed and doing all this stuff. It's dumb as shit or chugging and binge drinking. Obviously I was on the yak, shout out the case race, but like, you're not going to be doing all this dumb stuff because you are now an employee to a private entity. They can handle it however they want to and flashing the gun and doing this and that too. Whether it's you're doing some type of signaling to show like what type of life you live and you got a gangbang or live this certain life to impress people that you ultimately don't give a fuck about and to stunt and to flex, like that's just the wrong path, man. And you're fucking up millions, tens, even I'm seeing reading articles to where you're potentially fucking up over hundreds of millions of dollars, man. For what? For what? To be on Instagram live and kick it with your homies? Your homies, your boys should know that like get better fucking people in your life. And I know that's easier said than done. And there's a process with it, but it sounds like he doesn't have the right influences in a light in his life to actually check him. Right. It's a similar situation. Not, 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 it's not like a fucking it's apples to oranges, but uh, Antonio Brown's kind of falling out of the league and everything else. Like you're surrounding yourself with these yes, man, and people who fucking care about the wrong shit. And they're just telling you what you need to hear. Um, it's kind of my take on not knowing entirely all the ins and outs of this situation, but seeing the headlines of a player uh, like John ja Morant and the talent that he has and the opportunities that he has, and he's going to get nine lives in this world. Like that's what, that's how it works. He's that talented, but you have to understand the opportunity that you, you do have and, and figure it out, man. Cause you, you're, you're, you're fucking up so many things for not only yourself, but the longevity of yourself and other people that are, or in your closest circle, which is probably his family. Hopefully he's got good people. Hopefully he listens to the Next question, are, are athletes overpaid? <laughs> which brings us to the pressing question, are athletes overpaid? <laughs> well, let's talk about net coins. Have you been looking for a new trusted exchange for your crypto trading? If so, check out the boys at NetCoins. NetCoins is a safe and secure platform to buy and sell crypto that supports some of the most popular cryptocurrencies on an easy-to-use mobile app. NetCoins has been in the crypto game for almost 10 years in Canada and is now available in the US of A, offering no-fee trading with over 35 top crypto tokens to buy and sell. Plus, you can stay on top of the action with limit order and push notifications so that you can trade instantly when the market moves. For a limited time, 
You can get $25 in cash to trade on the app when you see the referral code, referral code BUSSIN. This is for a limited time only. Download the NetCoins app today, available on Google Play and Apple Play stores, uh, or learn more first at netcoins.com. For a limited time, you can get $25 in cash to trade on the app when you use the referral code BUSSIN. Download the NetCoins app today, available on Google Play and App Stores both, or learn more at netcoins.com. Invest with NetCoins today. Should we talk about something positive? Yes, there we go. How about our boy Foster Moreau? Yeah, man. So Foster just signed with the Saints. Shout out to boy Foster signing with the Saints. I'm sure uh, I'm sure DC Derek Carr had a had a voice. I had a voice in that signing too. Like Foster, man, number one, somebody who's underwent treatment for Hodgkin lymphoma, which is a cancer that he found out he had a couple months ago. It kind of broke the internet popped out that he was on a he was on a free agency visit. I forget where. Does anybody know where? I'm pretty sure it's with the Saints. It was with the Saints? I'm pretty sure, so yeah. He was on a free agency visit, doing his physical and everything else, and they ended up catching that he had something going on. They run tests and finds out that he has Hodgkin lymphoma. Jack, are you able to explain? Um, Hodgkin's lymphoma is yes. basically like your immune system that fights off germs it becomes extremely weak, so you're very vulnerable to any kind of sickness, and you're just at a really low point in terms of immunity. So, yeah. So when that happened, obviously a massive shock to Foster, I'm sure. Like, again, he posted about it on the internet. Internet was erupting about it. Um, obviously just a fucking sad thing when you see, like, somebody, like an NFL athlete, having uh, finding out that they have cancer, more or less, like, on a on a free agency visit. Um, I'm sure it was absolutely scary for Foster, but uh, he is now signed with the Saints. They feel very good about what his progress looks like, that he could potentially, on this article here, I think it was on ESPN, that he, uh, he'll he be looking to potentially play this year still. So based on the progress that he's making, um, what are some of the quotes? I knew, I think we knew that he was going to be cleared to participate and we felt like we were... Uh, a destination that he was certainly interested in. Obviously, LSU, he's got the New Orleans ties, but it's never it's never done until it's done. And so soon as the draft was over, we had some communication. I will say that we knew uh, we were looking. I knew where we were looking, and it was just a matter of trying to get something done. Um, and again, it seems like he's on the path to be playing and participating um, in off-season activities or training camp, I think, this fall. Yeah, it's similar to what... Uh... I think there's two types of it, but Eric Berry, this is what he had. Oh, really? Yeah. He had Hodgkin lymphoma? And then he came back and right here. So uh, he came back for the, he was diagnosed to the 2014 in December, came back for a 2015 season and was a pro bowler, was on the all pro team and was the comeback player of the year. So hopefully we get that same juju with Foster. Yeah, I know, man. You know, like I I'm fired up that he's, He's got some positive news signing with the Saints and, and was able to kind of figure out some things and find some positive side of it. Because I'm sure at first it was scary as fuck, man, when you find out that you have something cancerous going on. I know I've spoken about it before, but during my free agency after Washington, when I was done with Washington, I had went to Buffalo on a free agency visit. It was my first one. And I was just doing a, a, your typical C-spine MRI. And uh, just because I had stinger history, I had stinger and a couple concussions. And so they wanted to do a, 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 a C-spine scan. Uh, went into the, uh, the fucking MRI machine, come out. And I go into, I sit with the athletic trainer and they put up basically the scan. And they go, Will, do you see this white mass right here? And uh, I was like, yeah, what, you know, what's going on there? And they're like, you know, we're, we're, we're honestly, we're unsure. We need you to get tested by a neuro, uh, neurosurgeon or uh, neuro radiologist to get an MRI on this because we could be looking at something cancerous right here. We don't know. This doesn't fit the mold of what they see in usual MRI scans or C-spine scans. And uh, we don't know if it's in the history of any other C-spine scans that you had because I had gotten C-spine scans in the past with the Washington Redskins. And uh, so obviously your antenna goes up on, you know, what the hell is going on? They pulled me out of, I was in a linebacker meeting watching film with Buffalo Bills linebacker coach at the time and was going on my routine free agent visit only to get told that, 
hey, we could be looking at something cancerous and it's a potential tumor in your brain. It was like this white mass that was sitting in my cerebellum of my head. And um, they're like, do you want us to get you a flight back to DC? I'm thinking they were going to do an MRI there. Like it wasn't really hitting me yet. And they're like, we think it'd be good if you're around family or people that you know when you get this, when you get this MRI. And I'm low-key starting to freak out then. Call my dad. It gets a little bit emotional with my dad. Get rushed to um, a radiologist in D.C. Get a, a brain MRI on my, on my brain. They put some dye in there so that way they can tell what it is. I get done with the, uh, with the MRI, start going upstairs, and I can hear the uh, uh, neuroradiologist talking to our surgeon with the Washington Redskins at the time, Dr. West. And I can hear walking in like, I think this is a tumor. This could potentially be cancerous. We might need to look at getting this out of his head, cut out of his head and sent to a lab. And then he was like, oh, uh, he's, he's, he's here. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Uh, I'll call you back in a little bit. You hear him click and go, Will, what are you, how you doing, man? Come on in here. And I was like, doc, like, uh, you know, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of caught the back end of that conversation. Let's just cut to it. What are we talking about? He was like, Will, like, come over here. He's like, you see this white mass? And he was like, we're, we're looking at something that could be cancerous. Like we could be looking at a, uh, I forget what the, the terminology was, but some type of tumor in your brain. Um, there's a low chance it could be a cyst, but based on what I'm seeing, based on some of these color patterns and everything else, there's like a solid outlining versus like some cloudy lining or maybe it's vice versa. I don't know. My head wasn't all there. My head's kind of wrapping, trying to get my arms around it. And he was like, uh, we might need to get this operated on, taken out of your head and, um, and checked for a tumor, some cancerous. And he was like, the positive is we can put some titanium, some fucking animantium basically like on your skull and you could still play. And I was like, doc, look, I'm going to be just transparent. Like if we're looking at a, a tumor in my brain that we have to get removed, the first thing, like I'm not thinking of putting my helmet back on and fucking doing the Oklahoma drill right away. Like I'll probably just be done playing. And he's like, you know, have a couple conversations get off the phone. I'm driving home. I talked to Dr. West and she's like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to get options. We're getting your MRI shipped off to people in Europe and fucking all the best, getting the best eyes on it in the world. Uh, cause you need a neurosurgeon now to look at it. He's a neuroradiologist. Now he, he's not able to identify specifically what it is. A neurosurgeon can. So I'm up all night. I'm telling my boy, Trent Murphy. I'm not telling Charo, my wife, now wife, she's off in the Philippines. I'm not telling my mom. I just kind of tell my dad, I tell Trent Murphy and a couple of my boys. So we're kind of up all night trying to figure out what it could be. I don't, you know, it's, it's sleepless. Get a call the next day from the neurosurgeon. He calls, Will, I'm sure you've been fucking, I'm sure you've been paranoid and, and you know, probably not gotten a lot of sleep. I'll start right now. You do not have a tumor. So that was a massive relief. Like we think you have a cyst that you've had. Like I've looked at all your old scans and your old MRIs. They were in those scans, the Washington scans. They were in there. They are hard to find in their defense, but they are in there. It hasn't grown a whole lot. I'm under the impression, we have this dated all the way back to 2014. I'm under the impression that you were born with this because it is in your cerebellum and you've lived with this throughout your life. So this isn't anything that's life-threatening like uh, you know everybody was assuming now. All to say, I'm sure when Foster's learning about all this stuff, like that is a, just a fucking scary panic. You're almost scared to tell your parents and people close to you because there's a sense of like, you know, like what's, you're kind of just accepting. Yeah. You're kind of accepting the reality, but you know how people around you that's closest to you might take it. And so you're almost nervous to tell them, but obviously like coming out on the other side and getting the positive, I hope all the same stuff. I know Hodgkin lymphoma. I know what Eric Berry went through. There's he's in the hospital. Same with Mark Herzlich from Boston college, who was going to be a first round draft pick was looking at leaving early and got hit with cancer comes back for a fifth year, ends up still getting drafted in the mid rounds and had a career with the New York Giants. Still, he's a speaker. He speaks on an awesome fucking story with him. But Eric Berry and Mark go through, you know, they go through chemo. They go through the hardship, man. You see him losing weight and everything else and battling back. Um, you know, Foster's got that same kind of mentality. So whatever he's going to go through, I'm sure he's going through all those processes. Hopefully it doesn't get as low as some of those things and stories you hear about. But I know just finding that stuff on some typical free agent visit, like, is definitely like a shock to the system. I think he's going to be here for tight end you too. I would love to. It'd be awesome if he sat with us and talked about it. But 
you know, hats off to the boy. Like that is some positive news. Seeing him sign with New Orleans too, like growing up in Louisiana, going to LSU, playing with DC, Derek Carr, like just being in the being in the backyard. Like uh, I'm sure he's fired up. So that's some positive news. Yeah, I will. And like the timing of that, similar with your timing. Like as far as contracts go, you have to just be thinking like, oh my god, like because I'm pretty sure like Foster signed a new deal. Right. It was like something like three year, $14 million. Like, thank God. That's what he signed for? Something like that. That's fucking uh, awesome, dude. Right. And so, like, the timing of it, though, because that could have easily Bad. been, they right. could have not signed him. Then he misses his window to get a little money. Right. And then you're signing a one year minimum, probably. Right. I know with my situation, um, who was the Preston, Preston Brown was a really good linebacker at the time. I think he was top two or three in tackles. Um, he left to go sign with the Bengals. So that same day, the Bills called. So I was fired up. Like, I wasn't part of the first round of free agency and kind of the second wave is opening up. So I go out there thinking I'm going to walk out there with a contract potentially, right? I'm meeting with DC, Coach Frazier, going over my whole process, how I study day-to-day throughout the week, talking about leadership, talking about all these things. And I'm fired up. We had a really good rapport going on. Had a really good rapport going on with the linebacker coach. And you kind of get plucked out of there. But you walk away without a contract. And even when I signed with the Titans, Titans came on board once we got everything cleared. I went through all my MRIs, all my scans, met with doctors, figured out that it was just a cyst. Then the Titans called, hey, what's going on? What happened with Will in Buffalo? Why didn't they sign him? Agents doing all the negotiating. I fly out for a, a visit with the Titans, end up signing a deal with the Titans on a one-year, $2 million deal. A little above uh, minimum, a little above minimum, minimum, but no other competitors in the in free agency. Bills, we try going back to the Bills. Bills was like, we feel good about what our doctors are telling us. And so there's a little bit of like, yo, is something still going on with my head that they know about that Titans or my agent or other people don't know about. But um, yeah, that's a good point. Like he could have easily, you know, it could have been higher if he doesn't have this come out. But man, that's a fucking good deal to have three years, 14 million with all that stuff coming out. So fired up for the boy Foster, man. I know he's a, he's just a fucking dog and just a good dude, a good soul. He's a ball buster and a little bit of a prick. And, you know, but he's an awesome dude. I'm fired up for him. What else we got, Jackie boy? Shane Ray, five-year hiatus, coming yes, back to bro. sign with the Bills. Shane Ray. So for those who don't know Shane Ray, Shane Ray was a first-round pick um, in 2014, 15, 16, one of those years. 15. 2015. He was a first-round pick coming out of Mizzou. He was a unanimous All-American. I want to say SEC Player of the Year at the time. But was a first-rounder to Denver. Got paired up with Vaughn Miller. Uh, had a shake, had, didn't have the best rookie year, had eight sacks in his second career and his trajectory. He was, it was looking up as somebody who was going to come into the fold was part of the Super Bowl winning team came off the bench. I think had a forced fumble or a sack maybe in the, uh, yeah, Super Bowl against fumble. Yeah. A Super Bowl against the uh, Panthers. And I want to say going into his contract year, Denver doesn't pick up his fifth year option which is sucks for a first rounder. You kind of want to be, you know, Taylor's talked about it plenty of times. You have this expectation that you want to live up to. You want to be a fifth round option guy. You want to get an extension with the team who drafted you. So a lot of expectation as that first round pick that you're trying to work towards. You don't want to be a bust. Objectively looking at his numbers and the, the journey he's had, you can put him in the bust category, not hating at all on his game. Just when you look at a first round pick, you want them to be like a legacy guy. You want them to be an eight, 10 year vet pro bowler and everything else for your team. Um, doesn't get his fifth year picked up. So he's in his contract year. Tears something, a ligament in his wrist and is out for like eight weeks. And battles have a, has a tough battle with being injured, being injury prone that year and goes into the market and doesn't have the best market. Signs with Baltimore, I think. Is that what he did? Go to, yeah, go to his Wikipedia. Uh, signs with Baltimore and I believe hurt himself even in Baltimore and ended up getting cut in training at the end of training camp. Is that right? It's like he has an asterisk by the Ravens and it just says off season and or practice squad member right. only. Right. So he got done with his four years in Denver, winning a Super Bowl, being a first round pick. He has the pedigree. He just needs health and needs to show that he can still flash. Similar to like a Jadavion Clowney. Some health concern, but he flashes every year. So he's able to still go get it back from somebody on a one-year deal because his upside is high as a first-round pick. Um, and so Shane Ray, 
signs with Baltimore thinking, okay, let me sign a one-year deal and again, flash a little bit and get a bag going after that. That's usually your thought process going into that. Has some injury history with, uh, um, with Baltimore and ends up getting cut on the last wave of cuts. That, an ego to a first rounder, you know, I know is a fucking shot. Like, you know, I can only imagine being an, an undrafted cat and kind of trying to like grow and start lower and go up. But to be a guy who's fucking unanimous, all American, SEC player of the year, first round pick, always going to be this. Yeah, Super Bowl, forced fumble, like trying to like, you know, have some longevity in the career to get cut, I'm sure is demoralizing. And not only that, he doesn't get picked up in the NFL. He goes to the CFL and plays for two years in the CFL for the Toronto, oh, I say that word, Argonauts. JP? Argonauts. Argonauts. Tough word right there. But, dude, you, you see that there? It says, in 2023, he suffered a torn bicep. Where? The, where at? Where do you see that at? Uh, under his Toronto Argonauts section. Oh, snap. So, he plays two years in Canada. So, you have that little bit of a career, right? Only to go up to Canada. Like, there's a part of you that's like, am I going to play in the arena? Am I going to play Canada? Like, no, I'm too good for that swallows the ego, realizes like, if I'm going to get back in the league, I know I got to fucking cut my teeth in Canada and get some film and bounce back from these wrist injuries. So he goes to Canada for two years and it looks like suffers a torn bicep late in the season uh, when the team wins the Grey Cup championship, but becomes a free agent in February of 2023 this past year. Now he does a tryout at rookie fucking minicamp at a minicamp tryout with rookies in the draft class in Buffalo. And now you see a photo going around. He signs with Buffalo. I'm sure on a minimum deal, which is what it is. It shows that he's willing to fucking rebuild a foundation at rock bottom, right? Like it shows that he's able to swallow his ego, swallow his pride, do what he has to do to just get back in the league because the dude loves ball. Like he just wants another opportunity that honestly, like it fires me up. Like I know he'll be argued about as somebody who's like, this was a first round bust. Whatever. Fuck that. The fact that the dude went through that adversity, goes to Canada, battles for a couple of years, gets a torn bicep, only to go to a rookie minicamp. The the humility you got to have to be a seven, eight year guy and to go in a rookie minicamp to try to get a roster spot speaks volumes to his fucking character. Whether or not he makes a team, we're rooting for him a bust with the boys, but fucking hats off to Shane Ray, dude. I think that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's kind of rewriting the book again it just shows uh you can be out of the league for a couple seasons and get back in so that the next question will compton i was gonna say what kind of story you write in there jp how many years until you're back yeah once i get done battling these fucking elements i'm in right now you, listen your boy's about to start working with a doctor high profile now and your boy's gonna get right i'm talking about this low back i got going on this blood work that I've been looking at, we got some stuff going on in the digestive system. We got to fix whatever's going on that's giving me these, you know, that butt, in, that, that butt wind infection in the eye. You got to get my vocal cords back, but you never know. I think what's tough is we're standing up. Not only am I on the outside looking in with the gambling side of things, but the boys are trying to stand up more shows. Yeah, but you can do three, four years of more shows and pop back in the league. That's a good point. So you're yeah. saying fucking capitalize. Exactly. Be a media guy, do the gambling. Then after a couple year hiatus, go to a rookie mini camp, earn my stripes, let these coaches know the boys still got some fucking juice. And that's off a of fresh body. Shane Ray did it off of an injured body. Yes. So you're fresh. And that's nothing to sleep on. I've only participated in five off-season activities, five training camps, right? And one beer Olympics. One beer Olympics. That's one it. case race. That's it. That's all the wear and tear we got on. That's all the wear and tear we got on my body, and that I think that does say something. Right. Um. I like that though. Take a couple years off. Twenty twenty six. Twenty twenty six or twenty seven. Playoff Willie the return and come back for that Titans new. Uh, right. That new spot that new we got. You cut the rope. If Ray would have me, I feel like Ray would be the stingy one. Right. We might have to take our talents elsewhere because Ray doesn't appreciate what sits in this fucking chair right now. You know what I mean? He keeps having bad judgment. He might not be there in 2027. Ooh, I like that too. I like that too. Speaking of, you guys see Will, Will Levis is now the starting quarterback for the Tennessee Titans. 
He had a couple good throws, although they are saying he's throwing that rock like Aaron Rodgers. He's looking like Aaron Rodgers out there. I saw that tweet. Someone's was like, I don't, you know, Will Levis looks like a young Aaron Rodgers. Like, what are you we see that, talking about? You see that about? release? It's the quick release, I do. Man. I like seeing those videos, but it's like, Titans fans, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We have a lot of time until there's, he's playing one snap. But why, but why not, you know, find some optimism? I'm not saying I'm being pessimistic. I just, I feel like I, someone's got to be realistic. Yeah. But I, I hope he is the young A-Rod people are describing him as. You think, he, you think he makes it interesting with training camp this year with Ryan Tannehill? I do. I do think he makes it interesting. I do think he's sending Malik probably home. At least I hope we do because we don't need three QPs on the roster. But what do you do for competition on the 90-man roster? You need that. Yeah, but <laughs> we saw how... I. I hope Malik does well and he finds a spot in another franchise, but he had a couple of shots this year and it didn't really pan out. Clearly, the system at Liberty was a high school system. And yeah. now you're in the pros. Yeah. I, yeah, I think I think you have a point there. You're not like throwing shade. It just is what it is. This is a business. You're operating as armchair GM right now. You're trying to find a couple guys who are going to compete for that starting job come August. It'll be interesting for sure. You know, I think it will on. because... Yeah, I think so. I think so. It seems like he's got like he's got the intangible stuff you want in a guy. I don't know him that well. I'm basing stuff off of some fluff out there. However, like seeing his passionate reaction when he got drafted, I know like that's take that that can be like overseen and stuff like that. But you can tell he's very excited to like make a difference in a team. I'm sure he feels slighted going in the second round. Although you did see articles out there of some teams draft strategies that he would have been picked in the first round had certain people not fallen right on their draft boards. But uh, I'm excited to see it. You know, I think like Tannehill needs to be the guy and you don't want to, you don't want to throw him into the fire, especially if you got a good situation going on with Ryan. Like, let's not forget like Tanny. I know he has his blemishes that people like to argue about, but the man's a good starting quarterback in the NFL. And that just, it, yeah, and he's fucking consistent. He's level-headed. My man takes a shot when he when he throws the ball, and I think he'd be good for Will to to you know to have under his wing to mentor and all that other stuff. But uh, I think it'll be exciting, man. I I do think the Titans are in a rebuild right now, but you know it's the NFL. Like it, they can make it interesting. You know, I know Vrabe. He's a big fan of this podcast. They can make it Vrabe. You can make it interesting. I do think you guys are fucking at the bottom looking up, but. I think you guys can make it interesting. Let's talk about Hey Dude. Let's interrupt this episode to talk to you about Hey Dude. One of the most comfortable shoes that are so comfortable that make your feet and your day better. Mitch can attest to it. Go ahead and give him the mic. He can chime in here. All of their products, unbelievably lightweight, astonishingly easy to put on, uh, slip right in, no tying necessary, a ton of variety, whether it's in it, prints, colors, materials, or styles. There is a look for everyone. Hey Dude shoes, they have a range of products. From, from tried and true styles like Wendy and Wally to a new lineup of casual sneakers, Sirocco, Cody, Conway, and Sunapi. Sunapi, Sunapi. Also new to the Hey Dude collection. Um, I said those. They're legendary, cushy, and comfortable. Check out more styles at HeyDude.com. Uh, Mitch, any stand-up of approval you want to put on? I know you love those dudes. Yeah, I got uh, I got two pairs. I usually more of like a more of like a slipper kind of vibe, but I'm, now that they have those new styles that you just said, there, I'm starting to see more of them more out, like going out shoes. And then one of those things you can do when you're going out, when you see when you're wearing your dudes, and you have another dudes wearing dudes, you just yeah. point at your feet and go like, dude. And then you just got a little bro moment. Oh, so kind of like a, if you got a jeep or a fucking motorcycle, a little jeep like a wave, little, it's little like boat wave. Just a little. Hey, uh, dude. Yeah. That's what you guys have. You yeah. done that? I have. Haven't. You been out in the wild and been like, dude, and then hug. I haven't because. Yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't. Shop now at HeyDude.com. Ultimate Fighter trailer came out. The Ultimate Fighter, the reality show that our boy Michael Chandler is in against Conor McGregor. Like, this moment and platform for the boy, listen, I think this is good for bussing, right? This is good for bussing because the boy Mike Chandler, like, at the end of the day, McGregor, McGregor hasn't beat anybody. He's won one fight. And it hadn't been against anybody substantial since 2016, 2017. Um, I think this will be interesting. I think this will be interesting. What do you, there's some leakage that's been coming out, whether it's behind the scenes. You know, McGregor, he's in, seems to be in midseason form when it comes to chirping. He walked him into that 185. You'll do what you're told. Oh. 
What are thoughts, JP? I know you're our USC analyst. What do you got going on here? What do you make of this? I mean, it was just classic Connor, right? Like, you know, him and Mike have been pretty respectful. Like on Twitter, they'll throw a few jabs. And it's yeah. a tough spot because you know how it went down. They put Mike in there first in the weight room. Yeah. You just have him waiting around. And he's in his like gym shirt and everything. And then McGregor comes walking in suited. And you, just, I wonder what was going through Mike's head of like, you know, like, am I, I guess we saw what's going through his head. Oh, what's up, Connor? You know, how you doing? But you got to think like, man, you know, Connor's about to come at you with something. I know, but. And he, the fact he calls him, like, I don't know why this stands out to me, but the fact he calls him Michael, like, oh, don't worry about it, Michael. I'm like, hey, that's Mike, not Michael. Yeah. Michael sounds like he's sunning yeah. him. And you don't know the production of the whole thing. Like, you know, they spice it up a little bit. Who knows? But you know, Mike, like. Mike's a, he, he's a different man. His heart turns black when he in that octagon locks. He's a good soul outside of the octagon. There's a lot of respect that always gets paid. Like, you know, he's called McGregor out, right, as a showman after winning a fight. But other than that, when they go back and forth, whether it be on Twitter or anything else, there's always that sign of respect. So I'm sure, like, when Connor comes in, Mike might be thinking, like, he's going to be that same dude until proven otherwise. And I think, like, with that comment, you'll do what you're told. I was like, fuck. He got the boy, I think, with that one. What would your response have been? You just tipped the cap? I don't know. Or, I know. Like, I'm watching. I'm thinking, like, what would I do? I'm like, I'd probably just be sitting there silent, too. Like, damn it. Yeah. I, 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 you have to lean on what he hasn't done in the last seven years. He hasn't done anything, right? Like, yes, promotion-wise, money-wise, entrepreneur-wise, of course, my man's got a fucking, like, a Lamborghini yacht, right? He wins outside of the octagon, but keeping it strictly octagon, he hasn't done shit. He beat, he beat an old man in Cerrone, and hats off to Cerrone. He's a true American, right? Like, legend. But he knocked him out, but that's been it. He hadn't beat anybody worth a shit since 2016, right? So I think you've got to play into that. You've got to have some of these mind games played out in your head because you're not going to beat McGregor on the mic. You're not going to beat McGregor on the mic. You've got to have some type of comeback where whether you're playing into what he hasn't done in years past and um, you got to let him do his thing. And then I think like uh, we were talking about earlier, but let him be the showman and kind of like, you know, talk about him like being great outside of the octagon. But like how Mike said, he responded to him on social media. I'll do whatever I want, whenever I want. And he's responded to something else, but you find your moment to time something up like that because Mike's had more success in the octagon recently than McGregor has. You just got to find a way to do it and be like, yeah, do your thing. Promote the spice. Sell this. You are the cash cow. Trust me. Uh, and kind of try to play those kind of games versus trying to go toast because he would catch me off with stuff like that. Like you almost, you almost got this aura of like you're fighting Conor McGregor and he's got that mystique of Conor McGregor. And you're just standing in there with cameras on you. Yeah. And he's suited and booted. You'll do what you're told. Like, oh, fuck. And then, so what? He would have got my ass. Like, yeah. been, what, like, what the fuck have you done? But if say I would have responded like that, say in the realm of a good response, but I would have been actually emotionally reacted. Like, I would have been, my head would have been everywhere. I wouldn't have been on my toes, like, having something cool, calm, and collected. Like, I need to get it outside of the room and kind of use the, the social media. That's what... Yeah, he got that swag, dude. He's just been doing it. He's been doing it so long, but. What about the clip that was in another teaser when McGregor just shoves Mike's face? I don't know. You got to do what you can to scrap right there, right? Like, That's what you're doing? You have to. Swinging. You have to. The way you shoved him, it looks like in the Mike, it, it, number one, like, damn. He kind of pushed our boy with like in the fucking face. Like he's up there. You know, we're making good TV and everything else. But he goes and, and fucking bitches you like that. And I'm not saying he bitched out or anything else. But you he tries to disrespect you like that with around everybody with cameras on and everything else. You know, people are already there and they're not going to let you fight. But you got to do your best to be trying to jump over the fucking octagon and go get him. Right. Yeah. Maybe he does in the whole clip. Yeah, maybe but... he does. But I'm just saying like, but we knew this was going to happen. We know social media and the, the 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 love that McGregor has outside of the acting. Yeah, like the dude's elite. He's A plus 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 when it comes to shit talking. And you almost you're ready to see that back and forth with McGregor because he is good at that shit. But you got to find your lanes. Like what Chandler should do, I think he should hire us to run his social media. 
I think we would. I think I think if he wants, I think we go toes on social media. If he wants to maximize his brand, yeah, that's what he would do. I think you contract out bust with the boys and our yeah. team, and I think we will get you right. When hand over the that password. Social media microphone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hand over your password, Mike. We'll the take boys it will get here. you. Yeah, we will take it from here. You focus on whooping his ass in the octagon because that will be an electric fight. Um, but as far as outside the octagon, maybe you know, maybe let the boys get it. Maybe let the boys get it when it comes to not being on the microphone. When it comes to social media antics and everything else. The ball is in your court. That is our offer. Um, not even happening yet. Like, I mean, McGregor hasn't entered the pool yet. Testing. No. I mean, McGregor's juiced up to the gills. I think that's pretty well known. You see his photos. His head, like... Yes, his face, although maybe not bigger, but it's inflamed. Like, it's puffy. Like, you, the dude's just, you know, I know in person it looks a lot different, but you know he's been on that stuff because he's been doing that movie. Whatever, what was that, what's the name Roadhouse. of it? Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Um, but. Yeah, you know, I, th I think it's good because usually you, I think you would be worried about McGregor, like, maybe not following through. But I think since he's dropping a documentary on Wednesday, since this show is coming out, it makes the most business sense for him to fight Mike. Yeah. And that's why I think ultimately it will happen. It might not happen in September. It probably definitely won't happen in September, but maybe like December. Right. You think December? Yeah. I mean, good drag on, man. I hope it's soon. It could be like the, a, the last card of the year type thing. Yeah. I mean, we're almost halfway into the year and he hasn't tested. So yeah, I know, he's got to be in it for six months. But I months. mean, I think they'll figure that out to where yeah, he doesn't have to be in there something. six months. It's kind of McGregor. You're trying to pack a fucking arena. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, baby, we made it. Fuck it. Hell yeah, we did. The McGregor's made us rich. Yeah, the McGregor, yes. Again, let him, let him play into that. You know what I mean? What else do we have cooking? I know we can do pet peeve of the week. We've been rolling for like an hour. Well, also saying something about how they've come to an agreement on the 40, I mean, not 49ers, the Washington Commanders deal that it's official, I guess. Yeah, man, it's time to get the jerseys back out. I think I think I can start rooting for the Washington Commanders again. HTTR till I die. But uh, I think this is awesome news for the city. I think the city, they're obsessed with it. They love it. Everybody's been waiting on Snyder to sell the team. Whether people are wearing trash bags at the at the stadium or not, not filling up the stands or other teams having a home game at FedEx Field, I think this is a, a massive move. And I think Josh Harris, uh, Magic Johnson, and that team – uh, we'll get it going in the right direction. I think everybody's excited, and that's what you need to build right now is excitement. And Washington has a good roster. They can make some noise this year in the NFC East. I think it will be tough with with the Eagles, and then you got the Cowboys, and I think the, the Giants are good. Um, but I think the NFC East will be tough again. But again, Washington now has a good roster. Snyder has sold the team. The, the excitement is absolutely maximized for that city. And if you win in that city... They will love the shit out of you, dude. So I am stoked for uh, the DMV, that whole area in uh, Northern Virginia, D.C. area. Um, because, again, it, it builds excitement. And I think that everybody was ready for that transaction to happen. I know I'm excited. I'm excited to root for the boys. There's always a part of me. Like, there, there, stuff didn't happen directly to me. But my wife being a part of the cheer squad and stuff coming out and... You know, the whole, there's a lot of stories with Snyder and just, you see the reaction and the pulse of the city and how everyone ultimately wants it to be sold and everybody hates Snyder, right? And um, it's tough, man. Like each year, they've asked me to come back for a game and I've always acted somewhat excited, right? But there's always been a part of me like, ah, just don't know if I, like, it's the right, like, time. Now that the, now that they're up out of it, I can't wait to to help champion the boys and we should get the we should get the pod out there for training camp maybe do a training camp stop out in out in dc or out in virginia um and interview some of the guys and talk about some of the the energy the new energy that is that is now in dc here's one question for you would will donate an acl if it meant taylor could play at a high level for two more years no no absolutely donate an acl like i gotta go through surgery yeah I need my ACLs, man. We heard what Taylor said. You can run the clip in the middle of me saying this. 
But when Taylor, when we talked about uh, Taylor 16 million, would he give up a million for me to be on the team? And he said, no. The chance Will comes back is we'll give him a million of yours. Yeah. You would say no. Yep. That's tough to hear. Hey, but listen, it's just business. If I get the upside, we can, we can talk, we can talk some business now. Like if I'm able to, like if Taylor was about that, right. If I give up my ACL for him to have a, what was the question? Uh, it's for him to have two more years of high level football. Yeah, we could talk, you know, a good percentage of that that contract. Right, it's more than a mil. Like, that's, that could be a business decision that we could talk about. But the immediate reaction was no, now that it's set in and I've thought about it for a minute. Yeah, if we worked out something contractually to where I get the upside and I'm earning money while he's playing, and when he gets that next big bag, the boy's, <laughs> he's a talent now. Let's not get it twisted. He's six seven. He can play over three hundred pounds. He can move. He's gonna have a fresh ACL too. We're not talking about any ACL. We're talking about a playoff Willie ACL. He's gonna be moving out there. The upside of that next bag, sign. You know, talk him into a three year deal, maybe fifteen twenty a year. If I get in that, now we're talking. I might give that up and go through because I'm gonna bounce back from an ACL in about four to six months. There's no question in my mind. There's no question in my mind. I'm sitting on here now with the vocal cords that I do still performing. I'm back from an ACL, not in a year's time. We're talking four to six months because the mental is a little bit different. Uh, let's talk about Factor, boys. What a way to jump into this podcast and talk about Factor meals. During the prime spring season, you need wholesome, convenient meals to energize you for warmer, more active days and keep you on track to reaching your goals. Factor can help fuel up fast with ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and tackle everything on your, your to-do list. Guys, I'm telling you, nobody wants to cook. Nobody wants to clean up. Nobody wants to run the dishwasher. Nobody wants to undo the dishwasher only to finally watch and binge your series on Netflix or anything else. Take the time, pay, pay the price to get meals delivered straight to your door healthy so that way you're not hungry making an emotional decision. You'll get it right to your door, ready to eat meals, throw it in the microwave, throw it on a plate, put it in the oven, do whatever you got to do and easily throw it away. The cleanup is easy. Head to factormeals.com slash bussin50. Use code bussin50 to get 50% off your first box. Guys, we're making you money. We're saving you money going to the grocery store. Don't worry about shopping for that hour or two in the weekend. Take this 50% off code, bussin50, um, and go to factormeals.com and get 50% off your first order. Can't speak more enough on that. That was, a, that was an ad read and a half right there. That was an ad read and a half right there. Let's get into our uh, pet peeve of the week. I think we have a couple fan questions. Okay, let's hit fan questions. Maybe Love that. Got... Keep working it. Yeah, we got one. And I guess everybody could kind of answer this one. Uh, but if you could live as any movie character from any movie in real life, who would it be? <laughs> Say that again, and they can answer first. This comes from Brian Boudet, uh, which is an epic last name. But if you could live <laughs> as any movie character from any movie in real life, who would it be? From any movie in real life, so that we're not—you we, can't be a superhero. Yeah. Oh no! You, like I mean, you could be. Yeah, not animated. Okay. In that role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the character. I wish I could take this one. This The guy in his tweet said, example, choosing Tony Stark because he is Iron Man, a billionaire, and has a hot wife. Yeah. I, like, I'm, I'm trying to think of all these uh, superheroes. I feel like those are... I feel like those are easy grabs. So I was trying to think of something else. But that is... That's a great one. It's oh, hard to be Rocky. Different. Yeah, but Rocky, like... It's like a bad life, honestly. Yeah, yeah, Rocky. Have you watched the Rocky movies? A lot of soft people. Have you watched... You just, like, watch... You don't, like, truly embody the Rocky. No, 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 okay. no. I'm just saying... No. I'm just saying, have you seen all the Rocky movies? Yes, I've seen all six. <laughs> like, my man signs over the power of attorney to somebody else and loses all of his money. And they have to work Rocky to get it 4. back. After Rocky Four, when he went to fight for his country against the Russian and beat him, the man was on steroids, the most loved guy in the world. They're chaining his name, only to come back to America, realize he's got insane brain damage and he should never fight again, and learn that he signed over a power of attorney and lost all of his money. He's got to go back to Philly and live in the slums again. If you haven't seen Rocky, you just got to listen to and that try clip. To keep, and try to keep his son at home, and his son just hates being at home. That where you going out when you come back, whenever, like. Massive disrespect. My bad, man. And then the train. Who's he train? What's that dude's name? Michael B. Jordan. No, no, not, not Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> no, not Creed. I'm talking Tommy Gunn. You're training Tommy Gunn. Tommy Gunn leaves you. 
Tommy Gunn leaves you to go with another trainer because he wants to fast track to the championship sooner. He ends up getting the title, right? He ends up, and then Tommy Gunn comes back in the bar. Like, you know, you were never gonna, you never wanted, you always wanted me to be in your shadow. And Rocky's like, no, Tommy, like, I loved you like a son. I loved you like a son, like it's one of my own. And he's like, you know, tries to get him the Don King guy, tries to get him to fight in the ring. And, um, you know, Paulie starts calling him a bum. And uh, he tries to get him, to, he tries to talk Rocky into coming in the ring and, and promoting that fight. And Rocky's like, my ring's outside. And beats the fuck out of Tommy Gunn. Then in Rocky Six, you're in a you're you're in a you're in a you're in a, uh, you're in a situation. Rocky Balboa, you're in a situation like George Foreman. You're coming back and kind of fighting, not for charity, but your son still hates you because you're going back in. It's always all about you. You lose your wife, like you lost your wife. And they're trying to get some stuff out of the basement. Like he's still living that life. He's got a little bar, easy, simple life. Rocky can live that way. And then you go on to Creed, and Creed, Michael B. Jordan bounces you out of the films. You can't even create on the films. What kind of life is that? No, I don't want to be Rocky. To answer your question. No mess. <laughs> yeah. What, was your, what was your answer, though? I think Brad Cooper's character. Oh, right, right, right. right. That, that's a tough beginning and end, though, too. Yes. Yeah. But uh, also a really good middle. Yeah. Why don't you tell us about that movie, Will? I, you're right about the end. There's part of me, like, when I said that, I'm like, man, do we get to be, like, do I have the unlimited pills, like, for eternity? If not, that is a... But at the end, doesn't he find a way, like, there's, like... Does he, like, fix it where there's, like, no hangover or something? Something like I thought there was something like that. You know they created a TV show off that, too. Limitless, I think. Limitless I, I don't, TV I show. I don't the TV show. Who would you guys be? I'm either going... Um, Jack Sparrow. Yeah, I see that. Because he's just, he's out there just living life on his own terms. Out on the open seas. Absolutely dunking on Commodore Norrington whenever he gets a chance. Um, always, like, around beautiful women. Or, I feel like the lowest hanging fruit is Vincent Chase. Or our boy Vinny Chase from Entourage Movie. That's a tough life to beat, but... <laughs> yeah, tough life to be upset at. I'm going to be Dom Toretto. Why Dom less Toretto? Said, less said, no, no one else said. Yeah. I just watched the original Fast and Furious last night, and it was, man. Right, she's amazing, right? So much fun. Did you see going around Twitter, like, what part of Fast and Furious did you realize, like, all right, I'm done with this? Is it yeah. when, when he dives and catches Letty? Yeah, over the thing, or... Over, like, a 300-foot highway. Or when Ludacris, truck. Yeah. Ludacris and Tyrese space were in bro. space, when Dwayne, like, Held the helicopter by just a chain. And, <laughs> and, and when they're like going from building to building on like the 180th floor. Yeah. Yes. God. Fast X comes out this Friday. And when they're flying the plane. Yeah, yeah. And when they're flying the plane and Dom and The Rock and all these guys are fighting inside of the cargo. It's insane. They are, they are superheroes now. It's It's... Indiana Jones could be cool. Oh, man. What are some other good ones? I feel like Star Wars would be a good one. Yeah. Living the oh. guy. <laughs> Mitch said Star Wars is dumb for anybody that didn't hear him. Well, what are you, a Star Trek guy? In that mic. No, I am a Harry Potter guy. Harry Potter. Is that the war that goes on? Star Wars and Harry it's Potter? Star Wars versus Harry Potter, is it not? No. I like yeah. both. Yeah, I like I both too. I will, I will take Harry Potter over Star Wars, but I don't. I'm not discrediting Star Wars. I've never watched any of the Star Wars. I'm fucking stupid right now, so you better hurry it up. <laughs> I never watched any of the Star Wars. I just never had any inclination or want to watch Star Wars. I just, I'm not into it. What was this comment again? Star Wars is dumb. How are you gonna no, say I think that? Star Wars is dumb. How are you gonna say it's dumb when you've never seen it? I've just never wanted to. Like I just think like the sci-fi about so it all. Explain it being dumb. I that so sci-fi. Go talk about your wizards and fucking wand throwing. That's like magic and shit. And I think that's cooler than like fucking going like this and the person starts choking. Force choking? Let's grow up here. You think force choking is stupid? Yes. But doing it with a wand is it? I think I think the like building defense orbs around you just like it's with magic. the force. That's magic stuff. I think that I think that stuff is cooler than, than being one with the force. Yeah. And, and, and trying to marry, like, nature to, like, a lot of philosophies that are taught in Star Wars. Yes. You sound fucking stupid. 
and there's not there's I'll not a wizard on, cap I'll out there that would fit your head. Please pass the mic. <laughs> <laughs> that thing would look like a little birthday hat on your head, dude. That is a good question, though, for the internet. If you had to get rid of one series, which would you get rid of, Harry Potter or Star Wars? Hey, that and when 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 Jack was saying that too, I was like, man, that is a question. But that we does. need to all answer Everybody right now. Answer. Go ahead, JP. I go first. If uh, you, I'm getting rid of. Oh, wait, let's ahead. let's type the question again. If you had to choose between Harry Potter and Star Wars, which universe, which would it be? See ya, Harry Potter. Expelliarmus, as they say. <laughs> I will agree. I'm going to stick with Star Wars. I just feel like there's endless possibilities in that world. I agree with you guys, man. Like, I think as far as the up-to-date and the, the, the movie writing and everything else, I think Harry Potter is fucking awesome. They do a great job. But the universe of Star Wars? Yeah, twice, three times, ten times, hundred times bigger. You can do way more stuff, and there's way more... I think it's 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 better storylines. It sucks because it's so. That's a tough one. It is tough. I think Harry Potter's awesome. Got an answer. And if you had to pick out of the rides at, at Universal and Disney, I'm picking Harry Potter. We we know where I'm at. I'm picking. I'm keeping Harry Potter. Yeah, we know. Bloss. I'm interested to hear Jack. Yeah, I'm picking. I'm picking Star Wars. I grew up with Star Wars, but for all the same reasons too. You said like, you know, the philosophy behind it. The storylines, it doesn't the characters, it doesn't get any better than that. The light and the dark. We dude. just said the, oh. the storylines and and the characters for Harry Potter. The first one for me came out when I was in first grade, and they were like my age, they're like ten years old or whatever. And then we grow for almost a decade and a half, and you see this character development, and they grow with you. To me, that's special. I have I have to stand with Harry Potter. I grew up with all, like, Ron and Harry and Hermione and the whole gang. You grew up with Star Wars, too, a little bit. The first Star Wars came out in, like, 1989 or something. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, some of the new uh, worlds that they've introduced. I, li I like the new series. I like the, like, Rogue Ones and the new characters they developed. I wasn't the biggest Star Wars fan as a kid. I was more of a Harry Potter fan. But as the new ones have come out, I really like them. And I agree with you all. The like, there's more possibilities because the universe is so much bigger in that world. But I solely, I just couldn't give up Harry Potter. It's not that I'm giving up Star Wars. I just cannot give up Harry Potter. So for that reason, I will be sticking with Harry Potter. Lord Voldemort or Darth Vader? I mean, that's tough too. They're just like both the antithesis of evil. It's, Are you saying like a better villain? Yeah. It's, Probably Darth Vader. And you got Lord but, Sidious. Uh, see, but Darth Maul. I think for that argument, I would kind of have to go Voldemort because there are so many Darth Maul, Darth everybody. Yeah, but the 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 elite of the elite, and not only that, but like, it's like a crime to say Voldemort's name in the Harry Potter world. Everyone says Darth Vader, but if you even say Voldemort, people <gasps> do not speak his name. They did a good job with that. They did a good job with that. But I still think Vader, I mean... Vader's talk hard about, to beat. When you, yeah, when you talk about the whole growing up stuff like that, like you think, you know, you're reading about Anakin Skywalker in some of these magazines when you're young and he's like, he's uh, driving, what are those called? When he was racing. Pod racers, dude. When he's pod racing and he's young and growing up and you kind of just see the transition to Darth Vader, you don't get that old Voldemort. And then like, dude, the dude... What? Tom Riddle. Yeah, but there's not like uh It's not like it is in Star Wars, no. Yeah, you do not get the You whole learn whole about story. it. You learn about it a little bit, but yeah, you're not seeing the And whole Tom Riddle almost development. felt like he was evil the whole time. Anakin had there was a time when there was good in him. Yeah, and Lord Sidious and then, was, like, was Senator Palpatine like hiding in plain sight as evil transitioning Anakin Skywalker into Darth Vader, like manipulating him. And you don't really put it together. I know I didn't because I wasn't like a, I wasn't like, you know, the older generation that Star Wars junkie that knew Palpatine was Sidious. So when I'm young, going to these movies and theaters and you start realizing like, yo, their voices are kind of similar and you put it together that like uh, Palpatine is Lord Sidious. And then he transitions Vader and he kills our boy Samuel L. Jackson in the hallway. And then ki also kids like, 
Anakin Skywalker is a fucking evil motherfucker. What should we think about doing like a bus in movie club where like once a month we let the fans know we're gonna watch this movie so that we can just that would be fun. I think people would like that. Maybe drop need to hear in the comments. Drop comments. Yeah, Yeah. start saying movies. Who's winning in that battle? If you took the Harry Potter world versus the Star Wars world, who's winning? It's tough to beat magic, but the Force. Yeah, and you got fucking laser guns. Yeah, yeah, bro. I think. I mean, who, who's taking Yoda? Who's beating Yoda? Dobby. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to think of the characters like, like, yo, Luke Skywalker is body bagging. Harry? Yeah. Ah, bro. Oh, bro. Harry's the chosen one. Yeah, but he gets so he gets lucky in out. all of his movies. Oh, well, that's part of his gift. He was a baby and beat the greatest wizard of all time. Luke's a bad motherfucker now. Ray? Wood. God, I love you, Jack. Ray Wood. I have one more question before we go to pet peeve, and it's all. We have any more ads, by the way? Yeah, we do. We can do one. We interrupt this episode to bring you Duke Cannon. Warmer weather is here. Warmer weather is upon us, and things are heating up for the boys. But guess what? We're not sweating it on the bus. Why? Because Duke Cannon has our backs, not only our backs, but they got our pits and low backs as well. If you need to upgrade your grooming routine or restock your favorites, Duke Cannon has everything you need. From antiperspirants and deodorants to thick body wash and their big ass brick of soap. I'd love to give a personal shout out to their coal mining face wash, my personal favorite. You can pick up these hardworking products at dukecannon.com and use code BUSSIN10, that's B U S S I N 10 for 10% off your order. You can pick up these hardworking products again at dukecannon.com, use code BUSSIN10. Oh, fuck, that's in the description link. That's all good. That's all good. Just go to DukeCannon.com or go to Target. It is at Target as well. Not for clowns. Shout out the boys at Duke Cannon. Um, I do have one more question. Super easy, but I've been seeing this on Twitter whenever we ask for uh, fan questions. Is cereal soup? No. Explain. No. It's just not soup. So, uh, cereal is cold. Soup is hot. End of discussion. Spacho is cold soup. What? Spacho. Never had it. Well, it's cold soup. Yeah, well, they, such thing as cold soup. Yeah, well, you can call look, it. Look, I'm not. I'm not defending this side. I just want why you think cereal is not soup. The parameters of soup is hot. What's the what's the gazpacho? Gazpacho. Gazpacho is just a standalone. It's just got to be called gazpacho. You know what I mean? No, that's just, that's just like chicken noodle. Like you know, chicken, just, hey, say, finish it. Soup. Finish it. Yes, chicken noodle soup. Chicken gazpacho noodle soup. soup. No, brother. We're not... All right, please in the comments tell if gazpacho soup is soup or not. I just want to know why c- cereal is not soup from you. Yeah, because cereal's cold. That's it? Uh, yeah. But... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody, what, what else? You... Is, is gazpacho sweet? I don't know what gazpacho soup. is. It's cold soup. <laughs> Type it in. Look. So, like, if my chicken noodle soup is cold, is it just... Gis- Gazpacho? No, it like it, it is a certain kind. I don't even. It has a recipe. I think with cereal, that, it's a one hundred percent milk based liquid. Soup is not. Yes, I agree with you. According to dictionary dot com, soup is a liquid food made by boiling or simmering meat, fish, or vegetables by adding various ingredients. So, right, and what I was going to say, too, is cereal is simply, like JP said, milk-based, and you're just dumping cereal in the bowl. You're not combining all these ingredients to create, you know, whatever your little concoction is of, of hot soup. Yeah. Yeah, you're not, like, even even the cold soup, I know you're not. Uh, you're just kind I'm of on the, on the side that cereal is not soup. So, the even way. the gazpacho, I would, assume, I would assume that you're still, let me see here. Made of raw blended vegetables. That's a juice. So gazpacho is a cold soup and drink made of raw blended vegetables. That's a juice. That is a juice. And then that's tomato def- basil soup is a juice. That's the same thing. Tomato tomato basil soup is hot. But I'm saying that's the that's the it, that is the same thing gazpacho and like the consistency. Hang on now. Those so are the here same we go. Things. So if by Mitch's definition, like tomato basil soup, you still got to combine ingredients and boil it in, you know, on, on a stove or on an oven. Is that what it is? Oh, stove top. Yeah, under a flame, over a flame. 
Um, if you're making a cold soup, if you're not doing anything and you're just blending vegetables together to make a thin consistency, a soupy consistency, like you're explaining, that is by definition a juice. <laughs> Think about it. Think of when you're juicing, you're fucking blending up vegetables. Thank you. I, I thanks, Garrett. I feel like Garrett, that kind of backing from Garrett too, <laughs> makes that win. Makes that a uh, I don't w. think that cereal is soup. I think that uh, milk in the soup, which is giving the whole like soup argument, that is just an add-on. The cereal is the physical grain or whatever you're eating. But the physical cereal, grain, like cereal, a lot of cereal is made out of grain. I know. I just I I, I like hearing Jack talk through this. I, the, I was you're I, I, you're you're trying to. Make me sound stupid when cereal is grain. I think it's funny to hear physical grain. Yeah. It, and the milk is the pairing that gives it whatever the soup argument. I, so what, what side are you on? You're on cereal. Cereal soup is. No, I said like five minutes ago, cereal is not soup. I'm on your team. Okay. <laughs> but gazpacho is cold soup, just to be clear. <laughs> Why don't you go have some gazpacho? But, man? but, but do you not agree that it should be gazpacho juice? No. <laughs> what do you mean? And look at all the ingredients in gazpacho. You guys are. <laughs> all right, let's Drop go. Best gazpacho spots in Nashville. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go around for a uh, pet beaver of the week. What do you What do you got? So should we do best soups on Thursday? <laughs> yeah, I've been wanting to do best, that best soups, soups, but we can't do it until it's the winter. We got best soups. <laughs> I think there's a god tier for soup. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say it out one. loud either because this is my I tier. I feel like one. we gotta do soup when it's the fall. We're not, we're not like eating soup right now. Or do you I'll eat or do you soup. drink soup? That's another. <laughs> we'll save that for next week. <laughs> All right, pet peeve of the week. G, you want to, whoever started off. My pet peeve of the week is when somebody doesn't put the top all the way back on whatever it is, whether it's screwed, snap. Like, you know, you can be at a coffee shop, get a coffee. It's not on the way. You grab it. That could ruin your day right then and there. Could be screwed on. You go to grab the lid and it's just not screwed on. That can also ruin your day. So people screw the fucking tops back on, please. Tell you. Yeah. People screw the fucking tops back on. Go ahead, Mitch. People that love Star Wars. <laughs> My pet peeve of the week goes to repeating myself. So if I like, if I'm talking to somebody and they keep going, what, like what? Like my parents do it to me all the time because they, it's, I guess it's just because my voice is so deep and I sort of mumble sometimes that like I have to repeat myself like three or four times before they finally hear me. That just, it drives me absolutely insane. And like my roommate does it to me uh, as well. So it's like, dude, just hear me the first time. I'm not saying it again. That sounds like you got a little bit like a lisp combination. I do have a lisp. What? So yeah. are you mad that you have to repeat yourself or are you mad that you talk the way you do? Mad that I have to repeat myself. <laughs> it sounds like a problem that you could fix if you just elaborate. No, I'm not changing. You can hear me. Yeah, maybe not. There we go. That's the word we're looking for. Enunciation. <laughs> Thank you, JP. That boy. Oh, I start elaborating those words more, man. What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, just is it me? Just a file of shit I say wrong. I know. Uh, my pet peeve of the week goes to people. Unless your dog is old, you should not be carrying it while on a walk. I hate seeing people outdoors holding their dog as they're on a walk and they have a leash on the, the dog too. I'm like, what, what, what are you actually doing? Like, yeah. are you getting a workout in? Or, I mean, is your dog just like this soft? It can't be on the concrete. And if it is, it shouldn't be outside. It should be an inside dog. I feel you. I'm with you, brother. Yeah, I mean, if they're overheated, if it's a medical thing, sure. But like, it takes a lot for a dog to get overheated. Yeah, it just, it bugs me. <laughs> Don't be carrying your dog around, JP. That boy will be pissed off. 
my pet peeve of the week goes to uh, those people who just don't understand personal space. So you could be in a line waiting to get some food and they just are coming right back on you or you can just feel them breathing on you. Or if you're talking and they're just right in your you face. You get yourself in blast. <laughs> Man. So, yeah. My pet peeve is definitely uh, those people who just don't understand personal space. All right. All right. Yeah, don't be breathing on my fucking neck. Especially in the sauna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, real. here's the thing, though. Do you ever say anything? No, I don't. No, no, I don't. <laughs> it's too hard. It's too hard yeah. to say something. I'm not trying I'm to like, create a scene. I'm like, Dude, I went to go pick up that mic. <clears throat> no, no, I don't. Um, I don't have one this week. I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm floating by right now. JP, what's your pet peeve? You want me to give another oh, wait, one? Yeah, you already, Awkward. You already <laughs> No, honestly, I do have one, but it's, like, very specific, and it's when people say the term KK. Like, KK, and then, like, walk. I'm with you. That shit pisses. Yeah, it's oh, like. people say it out loud. I hate it in text. Oh, yeah. me too. But if you've ever heard it out loud, I get, I will get, like, visibly angry. Yeah. And, no, I, look, it could be a guy or a girl saying this. I'm not, you know what I mean? But if if you say KK and then walk off somewhere, Everything you've just said to me is now out the window, and I don't care about your life forever. And but, I am now boiling, yeah. trying to figure out how I kill you. So maybe I, I do have one, so please do not say KK. Or in text. I hate K in text, too. That's one. You type K in text, either one. My pet peeve of the week, old people drivers. Senior citizens on the road, I strongly believe that once you get over a certain age, let's just say 50, 55. Okay, I'll move to 55. Once you turn 55, you should have to take the driver's test every year. And Amen. Get that thing. 55? Oh, take oh. what? A couple hours out of your day? Oh, yeah. Amen. To go, to go hit a retest to be on the road? I can't wait till Will is 55 and has to go to the DMV. <laughs> No, no, a couple, no, out, on, a couple hours out of your day. Time out, time out. Now we're solving, now we're solving, solving operational uh, problems. We can figure that out to where they're not sitting at the DMV. Like maybe there's just a business that opens it up. Yeah, you go online, but you still have to drive. Like, I'm so sick of these old people out here. Like, okay, maybe let me reframe. Maybe we go up to 60. 65. Maybe, maybe you. As soon as you hit the senior citizen mark. Yeah, I was going to say, what's senior like citizen? Drawing I think it's like 65. Okay, let me start that over. When you turn 65 and become a legal senior citizen and reap the benefits of what Social Security, you get an extra hot dog in line or some shit, you get to go to them halls that they all go to and drink a beer, um, you should have to retest annually for your driver's license because these old people out on the road are a liability. Yeah I, yeah, I agree. And they're just slow as fuck. It's like, just get out of the fucking way. Yeah. And when you're like trying to figure something out and you just see one slowly drive by you and you're like, they have no fucking clue that I'm here right now. You ever pull up getting ready to give someone a bird and then you're like, oh, damn, some old lady. Yeah, they're old as fuck. Drooling on themselves. Getting that Meals on Wheels. God damn. No disrespect to Meals on Wheels. <laughs> Can we not joke? My grandpa's on Meals on Wheels. Take it easy now. I, I'm, a, I'm a believer in Meals on Wheels. I probably will be eating Meals on Wheels. But for the fun of the joke, <laughs> drooling on yourself, hitting that Meals on Wheels, trying to get back to that senior home that you're in. We got to get you off the road. Boys, we interrupt this episode to shout out the boy, Burt Kreischer. Sony Pictures have jumped on board to promote his new, his new movie, The Machine. Have you heard of Burt Kreischer? He's a stand-up com comedian known as The Machine. This month, Sony is giving us a new must-see movie to kick off summer starring Burt himself. Based on the outrageous true-ish story of Burt Kreischer that blew up on the internet years ago, the movie picks up 23 years after the iconic story from Burt's signature set, his true experience with Russian mobsters while on a booze-soaked college trip. You know the boy is a booze hound himself and loves to drink and throw him back. That trip from college has come back to haunt Burt as he and his estranged father, played by the legendary Mark Hamill, are kidnapped back to Russia by the mob 
to atone for something they say he did. Together, Bird and his father must retrace the steps of his younger self, played by the hilarious Jimmy Atro, in the midst of a war within sociopathic crime family, all while attempting to find common ground in their often fraught relationship. Burt Kreischer is the man, the myth, the boy, the machine. Get your tickets now. The machine is exclusively in theaters May 26th, and it is rated R. So make sure you are of age or get them tickets bought for you to go see that rated R movie. Back to the episode. Going back to the K's. JP got a like from K. Finally. Oh, no. JP's now back in the realm. K Adams is now in your stratosphere of people. Yeah, we she still hasn't hit the follow button, but it wasn't even it wasn't my tweet that she liked. We were we asked the question, who do you guys want to see on the bus? Some brave man out there on Twitter said at K Adams C and then CC'd me on the tweet. And then K liked it which I can't help but think she liked it because she knew I would get the notification. Like you picture her liking it and then looking over at her producer and say, hey, add JP Hovey to the list. How I, yeah, how I picture it happening is she looked at the comment, she pressed my name, then she looked me up on Instagram and then came back, liked it, told her producer, we got to make this happen. Let's, but not too soon. Not too soon. Maybe we start off, we get a push-up Tuesday. We, we get her on that Instagram live. K Adams, have her hit some push-ups on Push-Up Tuesday on your IG live. K, okay, whenever you would like to come to Push-Up Tuesday, send me a DM and we'll make it happen. It could, be the, it could be tomorrow. It could be today as we're listening to this. Get it clipped up. I'm with you. All right, boys. Hell of a podcast today. What are you? What are you? Yeah, yeah, we'll save tier talk. Uh, hell of a podcast today. If you're watching right now, hey, if you made it to the end of the episode, you are a fucking true tier one. We were, obviously, we are injury. We are injury, injury ridden, injury ridden right now. Like, we're battling at about 70%. And if you stuck with the boys, if you stuck with myself, you are a fucking tier one. Make sure you're leaving comments. Make sure you're loading out the fucking comment section. We need it. We appreciate it. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure you resubscribe to boost those numbers. Always thankful. Big hugs, tiny kisses. We're the fucking boys, baby. Thank you.